Okay, everyone, it's the next day and let's swatch. So the white, I guess I could swatch it. I really like the white. I feel it's very, um, it's what I need. Uh, if a white is uh, kind of anemic, too transparent, then it doesn't really serve its purpose for me. I really want to have the ability to add an opaque white without having to squeeze. So you can see it works really well without having to squeeze fresh paint is what I'm trying to say. Okay, interruption number one. <laughs> so let's start with buff titanium. I'll swatch first the colors and then I will try and do some of the mixes that I was talking about. This is Naples yellow, beautiful yellow. Then we have Lunar Earth, which to me is kind of I don't know, takes the place of a yellow ochre, something like that. And I'm trying to <laughs> swatch them without touching, without them touching each other. This is the Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal. It has a bit of binder in it, but looks to be okay still. Then we have Lunar Blue, which I'm excited to use. I haven't really had it in a palette since I got it, so I'm happy about that. My go-to ride or die pink, it just, this color makes me happy. This is Bright Rose by Holbein. Lavender, I really, really love having lavender in my palette. I love it pure and I love it in mixtures with all of the yellows, the yellows that I use. Uh, because they are, let me show you. So lavender, I would probably put it, you know, somewhere around here on the color wheel. And then my yellows tend to be more on the warm side. And so like Naples yellow, I would put it somewhere here. And then we have the lunar earth and buff titanium, also some murky version of them. So when I mix those two, I never get greens. And I really like it. I get like these muddy colors or peachy colors. And that's why I really love lavender. And between lavender and cobalt violet, I don't really feel the need to um, have a purple. Even though, you know, it would be nice. But since it's only 19 colors, I don't know why 19 colors seems like so little to me. So this is Lunar Red Rock. And it's just the lunar colors with their granulation, I just love them. And I think for me personally, they have a really um, kind of important spot in these kind of limited palettes because it adds a lot of texture and a lot of interest without having to, you know, like work too hard. This is Quinacridone Rose by Daniel Smith. It's my favorite. Uh, quinacridone rose it's so luminous um, other brands sometimes the ones that i've tried at least the one called quinacridone rose just don't have that um, vibrancy and warmth to them so i really really like the daniel smith version let's move on to this this is another color that i've missed another color this is a color that i've missed i had it in my winter in my uh, spring palette and then I didn't use it a lot so I took it out of my summer palette and that is 
Moon Glow. Another really interesting color that um, that just works beautifully on its own. It's interesting, and then when you add it to mixtures, it's also interesting. This is a color that I used a lot and kind of neglected when I fell in love with uh, Nickel Azo Yellow and also moved on to the more like buttery opaque yellows like Turner's Yellow and uh, Naples Yellow. This is New Gamboge and this is by Daniel Smith. And then what should I swatch now? Let's do this. The last yellow is Nickel Azo Yellow. Now probably I would say the between the Nickel Azo Yellow and the New Gamboge you know, one is could be redundant in such a palette. Um, the shades are not very different, but yeah, that's that's probably the first one I would remove, like maybe New Gamboge, uh, because I really like how pushy the Nickel Azo Yellow is. I talked about that. Okay, let's move on to this color. So because this is a travel palette, I think I'll use it outdoors, I did want to include some greens and I fell in love with two greens through using them in my summer palette and this one is undersea green. It's just like a beautiful earthy green with lovely granulation. Uh, here another ride or die color. This is ultramarine blue. This is French ultramarine, sorry. I'm using the Rembrandt version. It's perfect for me in every way. Granulates, has a beautiful tone to it. Love it. Then we have here Lunar Black. Now this is, I have a small tube and I'm almost out of it. Um, I might replace it with a Rembrandt like large tube if I can find I think they have a granulating black it's from my understanding this particular shade you don't need the Daniel Smith lunar colors I think there's uh, another option okay <laughs> took an oatmeal break <laughs> this is the longest video ever uh, what do I have left let's see so this is Holbein's cadmium red light and yeah I thought it would be fun to include it. I kind of included it in the last moment instead of uh, quinacridone red or quinacridone coral. We'll see what I think about it. The nice thing about these is that they are so tiny so I think I can use up the paint you know rather quickly. Okay cobalt violet is not making me happy with all the binder. This is the Rembrandt version and I had no problems with it in my large palette but now when I squeeze just a little bit it's still okay but yeah it has a bit too much binder. I might have to um, re-squeeze it. And last but not least we have this beautiful color cascade green i thought i would show you the more traditional lineup of the colors so in rainbow order and hopefully i'll have a review soon thanks for watching bye